Welcome to lesson 23. Again, we're sticking with arrays and I wanna show you a different way of looping through those array elements. So remember the for loop where I said i equals zero, whatever it was in the last lesson and I counted up to the length of the array? This is a different way of approaching the same topic. Let's take a look at this. This is using a for each. Now, an array has a property called length, but it also has this method called for each, where I can iterate over each one of those without having to do my own loop. It's sort of a built-in loop. It says for each element in the list, I want you to run my function. And my function accepts a couple of things. It's, it can take one parameter, which is going to be the item. It could take the parameter, two parameters, which would be the item and an index. And we'll leave it at that for now. But this is going to do very similar to what we had before where it says, go write function, and item is going to be the value in that position. So if I run this, I should see 135. It's just, notice there's, it doesn't even look like a loop yet. So it says 135, and if I put in item and i, I can also say i equals, let's put a space in there, plus i. And let's get our parentheses working right. Glad you caught me on that. So I can see there's my index of what I'm working on as well. So for each, very handy. This is with an external function. So you may, think about this, you may want to use a different function with this list at different times. The other way to do this is to put them together and just bash it in here. Let's copy that into script's background. And notice that it still starts out as list dot for each, for each element. The function is now inside the parentheses. The parentheses, parenthesis starts here. In fact, I'm gonna use this editor because it'll tell me. If I highlight that and it ends down here, all this code, function, curly brace, is all within that parentheses. I can blend this together. Some people do this for readability and it will work the same way, giving me the 135. So a little bit different way to embed the for each function into the for each uh, parameter. This is, we, like we saw before in lesson 19, a self-running function. Pretty cool. And then finally, if we add in the additional arguments, we can get the index of that, like I showed you before, as well as ooh, a third argument, ARR. So in this one, I have a list, apple, banana, orange. Let's find out what it does with that third argument. I get three iterations of the loop, and it says 0, 1, 2. ARR is actually the original array. I can pass the whole data set into the each iteration of this for each function. So every time it runs, it knows what the original function is. Maybe it needs to do something with that data. Maybe it's just displaying it like it does here. So Keep that in mind as well. You've got three options to this. One parameter, just to get the item value. One, to get the item index. Or two is value and index. And three is item, index, and the entire array of what you started with. So handy to know for each. Keep it in mind as an option for iterating through loops. All right, I look forward to talking to you real soon on some common methods some other functionality you can do to arrays that's built into JavaScript. This isn't even service now yet. This is still this is still JavaScript. It's got all this rich functionality for you. I love it. So I'll talk to you real soon about that.